So this is a cohort of gastric cancer patients that we treated in the context of a bigger clinical trial. It was initially a phase one trial with then multiple expansion arms. And what we are presenting here is the results of uh, the treatment of gastric cancer patients. Um, initially, we were enrolling patients with, uh, with advanced disease, um, but uh, there was an amendment and we, uh, uh, we also enrolled patients after second line. So in, sec in second line therapy, and the response, the the results is um, first of all the safety of the agent is similar to what has been described before. So the main side effects are um, bone marrow uh, side effects like anemia or leuco uh, leukopenia. Uh, we didn't see uh, pneumonitis or um, or um, neuropathy that uh, has been described with other antibody conjugates with different payloads. And second is the efficacy. The efficacy, we saw a response rate of around 22%, um, obviously depending on the prior lines of therapy or the expression of the, of the TROP2, which is a, the target of this antibody conjugate, the response rate yeah, changes a little bit depending on the patient population. But what we basically saw is that uh, this treatment is, is, uh, it works in, in gastric cancer. Uh, which uh, then opens the possibility of exploring this uh, um, versus the standard of care in, in second or third line therapy. Like we see with chemotherapy and with antibiotic conjugates, every time that uh, you treat more heavily pretreated patient population, uh, responses go down. It's important to note that at least one third of these patients had already received a uh, inhibitor of top one. Our payload is an inhibitor of top one. Irinotican is also, uh, and it's a standard of care option for patients with gastric cancer. So some patients receive like porphyrinox in the first line. So every time that you retreat with drugs that are similar in mechanism of action, you can see that uh, resistance builds up. So but also patients that are heavily pretreated normally respond less to, to chemotherapy in general. And this is uh, in a way a cytotoxic too. So patients with second line in second line therapy had a higher response rate than in third line. Uh, but still the numbers are sufficient to when you compare with the other treatment options that these patients have. So I think it's sufficient to keep exploring in, in both settings, in second line and in, and, and in third line. So we also see a trend, uh, patients who have high expression of the target tend to respond more than low. Um, but it's really hard in these programs uh, targeting TROP2, but also with antibody drug conjugates in general, to really define a line between high and low and responders and non-responders. So we are gonna be struggling with this concept of uh, which patients to treat uh, we know the higher the expression, the better, the more predictive uh, results, so the, the better response. Um, but we see responses in, in TROP2 low. So it is not clear that we need to exclude these patients, uh, especially in second or third line where in gastric cancer patients, there are very limited uh, treatment options. So for now, uh, it's just gonna be a, a piece of information that will be collected, but I don't think it would necessarily change how we manage. I think it's too early uh, to say. I think first it will be tested uh, in bigger patient populations with more patients in second line and in third line. Bear in mind that in second line, uh, the standard of care options like uh, ramisirumab, uh, paclitaxel has a response rate of 25% too. So although uh, we have a small number of patients yet, uh, it seems promising. If in that setting, um, it seems to be promising, uh, most likely in the future, we will see that being tested in, in first line. Um, there is also a trend in the antibody drug conjugated space where we see that combinations with immune therapy work really well. There are several approvals now of ADC plus uh, immune therapy. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if that's that's also one one way of um, of uh, exploring this this treatment, maybe uh, in second line first and then moving to first line. But the, all those things are very progressive. I think we have a small numbers of patients yet to 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 really move this to first line. Um, the main one, I would say the, the antibody is uh, basically very similar. The, the linker and the payload are different. And those small differences uh, change the pharmaco pharmacology of the drug. So the half-life is longer. So you can give the medication every two weeks instead of uh, day one and day eight of each cycle. Uh, so a little bit convenient for patients. But the difference in the payload, even if they have the same mechanism of action, changes the diseases that uh, have response. For example, with Gobitecan, the response rate in gastric cancer is very low. Similar um, is very low in ovarian cancer. But with this one, uh, we see good efficacy in these diseases. So changes in the cytotoxic component of the antibody conjugate can change which two more types uh, the drug is more is more efficacious. But I think it's different spectrum of diseases. Um, we don't have any face-to-face -face comparison in like, for example, triple negative breast cancer, but um, in, you know, in, in a series with, uh, with Timurotecan, there was a 40% response rate in triple negative breast cancer. So it looks promising also um, in tumor types where uh, Gobitecan is being used. Well, certainly uh, it's going to be exploring third line. Uh, there is no approved agent in third line, and, and we already saw significant response rate there. Um, um, so that is that is already about to open a clinical trial in third line. And then the second line is being discussed. It's been discussed uh, when to move um, to a second line. Uh, probably there you need to compare with the standard of care option. Um, so it's a, it's a bit, um, bit more controversial if you need to use uh, the ramosirumab, um, uh, paclitaxel, or the physician's choice. So that design is a bit more tricky. So I think uh, it will first be explored in third line with a bigger uh, cohort. And, and maybe we will see this moving to combinations or, uh, or randomized trials in second line.